Thank you, members. Well, very good evening, members, uh, members of the public and those watching uh, at home on YouTube. YouTube. Uh, welcome to this District Planning Committee on Thursday, the 2nd of February uh, 2023. My name is Councillor Kevin Lagan, and I am the chairman of this committee. Members, we are streaming this meeting live as well as recording, and by being present in the meeting, you are giving your consent to being recorded. During each item, please put your hand up to indicate if you wish to speak. I will then invite you at the appropriate time. Please note that the YouTube live stream sound recording is dependent on the correct use of the microphones. Therefore, can I ask you that when invited to speak, you remember to turn on your microphone and turn it off when finished. Please reference a page or paragraph number when referring to the agenda papers and keep your contributions as clear and concise or as detailed as you wish. Tara, apologies for absence, please. Thank you, Chairman. Apologies can receive from councillors Bill Boyce, Mrs. Chana Hell, Hoover Skeens, Siddle Stevens, and Stilts. Thank you, Chair. Thank you very much indeed, Tara. We move on to agenda item three, which is the minutes. It's recommended that the minutes of the meeting held on the 1st of December 2022, which is found on pages of 7 to 14 of the agenda pack, are approved as a true and accurate record. I so move. Do I have a seconder for that motion? Councillor Nunn. Thank you. Members, any comments to make on the, the minutes? Uh, agree these minutes by assent? Agreed. Agreed. Thank you, members. <laughs> Declarations of interest, part four. To, to disclose the existence and nature of any disclosable pecuniary interests, other registrable interests and non-registrable <laughs> interests relating to items of business on the agenda, having regard to paragraph nine and appendix B of the Code of Conduct for Members. Members, you're reminded that we'll also need to disclose such an interest if you become aware uh, that you need to arise this through the meeting. Members, could we have, do I have any um, declarations of interest? Tara, looking around the room, there are no declarations of interest. Thank you. Thank you, Chair. We move on to agenda item five, which is the... Uh, sorry, Councillor Stamp, please. Yeah, um, I don't know um, if this is the right time to actually speak, but I do notice that agenda item six has been withdrawn. Um, and I wanted to know if I could raise, uh, I'd like an explanation, please, if possible, because I'm, I'm really struggling to understand what the um, reason was given. It says for agenda item six, withdrawn item of the committee. There's a lot of words there, Chairman, but I, I thought I was pretty intelligent when it comes to planning or sometimes, so I haven't got a clue what it means. Mm -hmm. So could I actually ask for it to be explained, because I think I'm not the only member here who doesn't understand what it means before we start the, the business of the, the rest of the thing. Thank you, Councillor Stan. I think what I'd like to do, if it's okay with you, is I'll proceed with the agenda as planned, but we'll hold that back until we get to agenda item six, and then we'll ask that, because there may be other members who have a question uh, to supplement that, if that's okay. Thank you very much indeed. Um, so we now re move on to item number five, which is the report for reference 22-00289 RESM Reserve Matters. It's land at Broad Street Green Road, Maypole Road, and Langford Road, Haybridge, Essex. And this is found on pages five to, sorry, my apology, pages 15 to 48 on your agenda papers. Uh, Mr. Johnson is the officer here. Welcome, Mr. Johnson, who's going to uh, present the report. Thank you. Thank you, Chairman. Respondent is waiting for the presentation to, to come up. Thank you. All right, thank you. This is a reserved matters application for the approval of access, appearance, landscaping, layout, and scale. <clears throat> and just to say that <clears throat> those are the particular matters that comprise the reserved matters. But in terms of the details, the details are the strategic landscaping and infrastructure for phases three, four, and five of the approved planning application 1500419. Now, the application comprises a number of matters, and it's just useful just to go through um, what they are as set out in the proposal. Uh, the green corridors, 
open space and attenuation features within phases three, four, and five, and including those surrounding parcels three, four, five, six, seven, and nine. It will make a bit more sense when I turn to the presentation where I've set out some of these matters just to show how they, how they fit together. Uh, the formal play areas, including locally equipped areas of play, leaps, um, to the north of Parcel 4 and to the east of Parcel 8, uh, and a neighbourhood equipped area of play, a NEEP, and just to, for the distinction between the, those, those two acronyms, the LEAPs are basically for the smaller children and uh, the NEEPs are for the older children. Uh, the section of the internal spine road, which connects to both the, um, the spine road previously approved um, under reserve matters applications for phase one and two, and to the approved relief road, including details of bus stops. Uh, the internal road to serve parcel nine, allotments and playing fields, pedestrian and cycle links falling within these phases, including the public rights of way, the location and layout of the playing fields, South Parcel 9, the location and layout of the allotments together with the associated parking means of access and enclosure. Proposed pumping station um, together with details pursuant to conditions 18, which is tree protection, uh, 27 bus stops, condition 28 footpaths and cycle routes, condition 29 vehicular parking and condition 31 landscaping. So that's just the, oops, sorry, that's just the general part down of where the area is. Um, <clears throat> there's, there's, a, there's, a, there's a number of slides that I've put in here to provide some context, because the application is really about the, the, the detailed matters, and the detailed matters of which we've um, had PPA discussions around to drill down into those details, but also subject to um, uh, detailed assessments by the specialist consultees, which are within the um, the consultation section of of the report. So, but I think it's what's really important is just how the whole jigsaw fits together, because um, there's been quite a number of applications which have come through to members. When you look in the report, you know there's quite a fair few discharge of conditions applications, some of which wouldn't normally come to to to, to the committee here. But this is just to give an overview of how it all fits in and where this particular application is is is, is within uh, the whole scheme of thing. So you know throughout the various reports, you know we hear about the phases. So I thought it would be just useful just to set out um, these phases, the phase in which part of the development comes um, forward at a particular time and how that relates to other parts. You hear it in the, in the reports. So just to show we've got phase one over here, um, phase two, uh, three through to phase phases five. And within the phases, we have the various parcels. You've got the residential parcels, etc. And again, we hear ref references to those. So, so what's sort of set out here is within the, the various phases here, you've got parcels one and two, uh, uh, 10, 11 and 12, et cetera, et cetera. So again, um, it's again useful. That's why with, your, with, with, with the presentation pack sent to you, it's useful to have that to again, put things into context. When applications come forward, where in the development is it? What phase is it within? And what's the timeline for it coming forward? Um, so we can see those various there, we can see sports pitches, school, local centre, etc. And here, again, we're setting out the, the quantum of development within um, each of the phases. So here we can see uh, 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 parcels one and two, 160 homes, countryside, 10, 11 and 12, 262 homes, Bellway. Um, that was an application that came to you uh, more recently. Um, and then we can see the balance of 716 homes and also details of sports facilities, allotments, etc., and the care home that will again come forward in subsequent applications. Um, this slide covers the infrastructure reserve matters and again just showing how it all fits in. So We've got phase one infrastructure, which 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 uh, relates to the relief road here, which was approved in October 2021 under this application reference. Um, 
got a phase two infrastructure approved um, March 2022 under that reference number. And that's the area here um, adjacent to the, to the Bellway de development, which again came to members fairly recently. Um, we've got current application uh, for phase three, four and five. So what we're dealing with is what falls in this area here. Um, and, you know, elements along the spine road adjoining various other parcels. Um, and we can also see where there's, you know, future residential phases to come through. Um, so, which is here. And this drills down into the, to, to the more detailed infrastructure within the various phases. Uh, you know, for example, the Maple Road Junction, part of the Spine Road, etc. <coughs> Relief Road, when that's to be opened, um, infrastructure within phase two, etc. Um, I'm just going to go through these other slides fairly quickly because, again, they're really just detailed technical matters, but showing you what's the substance within within the applications here. So we've got the landscape proposals, again, just showing where they fit in within uh, this particular application and where they are within the overall scheme of things. Again, just more detail around the landscaping adjacent to parcels three, four, seven, six. <clears throat> Again, where landscaping goes around, for example, Haybridge Wood, um, along Broad Street Green, also around the sort of sports area. Again, these are just matters of details, post highways, etc. Um, this is the spine road here. This way it comes off the relief road. Again, highways, general arrangements around the, the sports pitches. Um, the leaps, the northern leap area, the central leap area, southern leap area. Again, matters of detail, surfacing and curbing arrangements. Again, just details of ditch widening, um, signs and road markings, basin sections. Obviously, this is all part of the attenuation schemes. Again, just some more detail there. Playground, flood bond and swell sections. Again, just around the perimeter of the playing fields. Uh, the Western Mammal Crossing uh, across the Relief Road and just the details there pumping station general arrangements that's uh, again the, just the compound surround of the pumping station again just the, uh, the rigid bus sweat path analysis along the Spine Road that's a uh, longitudinal section again just matters of detail style of the bus shelter along the spine road um, another substation and again just running through those details again just to, again just to help give you the, the, the picture of where this all fits in uh, which you have in your members pack um, this slide here um, just sets out some of the applications which have been approved um, with you already. You'll have this within within your presentation. So I know it's a bit difficult. I can um, see some of you probably straining to see what it is. But um, um, again, it's just giving more context. And again, as a reminder of what this development is about and, and, and the whole general picture. Uh, again, just the outline master plan. Again, Parameter plans, because most a lot of the assessments is based around how does the, the various elements of the scheme fit in with the parameter plans. So we can see the parameter plans around um, uh, residential density. So again, to ensure that whatever comes forward to us fits in with the density that we see as appropriate or we've approved as appropriate um, around the various elements of, of, of the site. The green and blue infrastructure. Uh, parameter plans around the access and movement. Um, the reserve matters residential. 
I mean, you can see that there's 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 three principal developers on the site. Um, countryside um, have provided or are providing the major infrastructure throughout the whole site. Uh, but we can see we've got the Bellway development, which members considered recently. We've got the uh, Chris Nicholson element, which is in this part here. This is currently, you know, under pre-application and will come forward as an application in due course. And the various other elements, we've got the countryside over here. Um, and again, the phasing and the implementation, which we touched on before. Um, for example, this part of the of the relief road um, should be opened and and operational by the 100th occupation and this element by the 350th occupation. And just a couple of overhead photographs just showing the, some of the progress so far. You can see the spine road there, um, the junction of Broad Street Green, and just a wider vista progress. Um, so that really is, again, just to give you, give you a context of what the application is essentially about and how this proposal sort of fits in with that. Um, the details are there, um, and you would have seen in reading the report. Um, all the, the consultees uh, support the scheme. The details are acceptable. Um, what's come forward has been fed, again, as I said, by a number of uh, principal planning agreement meetings where we've drilled down into the details to ensure that what comes forward is what, is what the council expects. Um, and hence the recommendation uh, for approval of this application as in the officer's report and subject to the conditions. Thank you, Chairman. Thank you very much indeed, Mr Johnson. We have one public participant before we move on to the recommendation and then debate. Um, it's the agent, Mr Kevin Coleman. Mr Coleman, if you'd like to take a seat at the table. Thank you. Tara, is it possible to put that wonderful little two minute timer up on the board? Miss Ford? Uh, yes, sir. Thank you. Perfect. Okay, Mr. Coleman, you can see your two minutes. Um, it starts from once you start talking. Thank you. Thank you very much and good evening. And thanks once again for the opportunity to come along and, and speak to you tonight. Um, so, as you've just heard, the application before you is the third and final strategic reserve matters application covering the key infrastructure, uh, landscaping and, and open space. Really the, the, the components that form the framework for the garden suburb within which the residential properties are then set. Um, the application follows very much the same principles that you had on the previous applications. Um, this application in particular includes the uh, remaining part of the internal tree line spine road and bus stops. It includes three additional play areas, uh, which provide a range of play equipment for different ages. Uh, includes the completion of the network of pedestrian and cycle routes, and it includes the sports pitches uh, and allotments. Uh, speaking of the allotments, as you'll probably be aware, there's now an agreement in place for the transfer of these to Haybridge Parish Council. Um, and this application is part and parcel of getting us to the point where we can then deliver those as, as soon as possible. Um, the sports pitches is an area of ongoing work where a contractor's, specialist contractor has been appointed to advise on the uh, construction of those to make sure we get the surfacing right and the drainage right and so on and so forth, uh, and continuing to liaise with, liaise with your officers about the optimum use and layout of the pitches. Um, it's worth noting that the application includes a full-size basketball court, which was brought in at the request of Haybridge Parish Council. Um, You've just seen from the images that Countryside are making good progress with delivering the infrastructure granted under those previous permissions. Uh, first stage of the relief road is going in, started at the Broad Street Green Road end as well. The internal spine road is taking shape. So the proposals before you, as you've heard, accord with the parameter plans and the design code. They're to the same standards as previously, and we hope that you'll be able to support your officer's recommendation of approval. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Coleman, and remarkably to the point. Well Thank you, well practiced. Yep. Okay, members, we have a recommendation um, to approve, um, uh, subject to the conditions as detailed uh, in section eight of this report. Councillor Stamp. Um, Chairman, yeah, if you'd allow me to um, just speak before you actually do deliver it, I just yep. wanted to draw members and your attention to a meeting from Performance Government Audit for July 2022, and in the spirit of opening it for a debate, rather than a proposal, it was recommended that the Chair 
automatically moving the officer's recommendation prohibits um, um, the councillors feeling free to be able to debate it. It was a recommendation and I think it was approved, I can't swear on it, but it says changing the practice of chairs moving officer's recommendation and having it seconded at the start of the meeting instead of allowing general discussion before putting motions up for debate. It's up to members if they want to do it or not, but that was a recommendation made by PAS to this council so you don't sort of just close the debate, it opens it, Chairman. I think that's a very sensible approach, and that's the approach we'll take this evening. So, members, I've got some hands that went up. Councillor Durham, first of all, please. Oh, thank you very much, uh, Chairman. Um, thank you very much, Mr Johnson, for your presentation. And I think it's very evident from the very detailed plans, right down to the design of the bus shelters, that we've got far more information um, about the layout and the landscaping than we've had for other similar developments, I mean, I think if you compare the information that we've had here with perhaps South Malden, it's chalk and cheese. Um, and indeed, it looks very much like from the road layout and the landscape plans that this, what is going to be delivered here is much more akin to the garden uh, the garden suburb principles that we set out. And unfortunately, that that isn't what we're getting elsewhere in the town. So. Um, you know, clearly we haven't got the designs of the actual dwellings themselves yet, which will, you know, obviously be the defining point here. But yeah, I, I, I think it's a, um, we've got to a good place through our consultation with the developers and through good um, collegiate working. And, and yeah, I commend you. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Durham. I think that's more of a statement. There's no question there. So thank you very much indeed. Councillor Edwards, please. Thank you, Chairman. I've got a couple of observations. Um, firstly, can I look at? The, can you go back to the um, slide with the parcels, please? Oh, that that probably would do. I noticed that the sports pitches hasn't got a um, number. Although, if you look on the report five point two point three eight, it does mention the various pitches, including a four-size basket pitch. But I was going to ask what other pitches are planned there, because I was thinking particularly of a cricket pitch, and I think that's been muted um, before. And I understand that the playing fields will come through the approval of the details for the under clause one of section nine or the S section one hundred six. Uh, does this application include discussions on the ports? pictures or does that come at a later reserve application thank you that's the first question the second question is um, as always I have concerns of connectivity to the rest of Haybridge including <coughs> pathways and cycleways I know we can only discuss this application before us but every application has its own internal cycleway network without any connection to the rest of Haybridge and I still have a concern about that thank you Thank you, Councillor Ippers. Mr. Johnson. Thank you. Uh, <clears throat> thank, thank, thank you, Chairman. Um, this application just sets out the details, but it's again, it's, it's part of a suite of um, the um, documentation to which, which this this application has to adhere to. Um, in terms of the sports element, that's also linked in with the Section One Hundred Six and what has to be delivered under that. Um, Communication has come through and it's set out within the report. Um, my apologies, I can't remember the exact section here, but it's set out within the report that um, Sports England um, have been discussing uh, uh, with the developers, um, with officers about the development of the sports pitches and the cricket pitches in particular were, 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 were mentioned. Um, the, the, the consultation response um, from, from Sports England, again, as a summary of those various discussions, um, is satisfied that um, with their understanding that the infrastructure and the sports facilities will be taken over by the land trust, there will be negotiation discussions around the delivery of, of a cricket field as part of this proposal. Now, I, I can't tell you exactly, where, well, I can't tell you where they will go, yeah? But, but that will be part of the agreement taken through, again, what has to be delivered also under the Section 106. Thank you, Chairman. Uh, sorry, you had a second question around cycleways and, and connectivity. Yes, Chairman, uh, to the Chair, 
connectivity of the rest of Habitage, not to the rest of the uh, site? Yeah. Um, I, I'm apologies. I, I, I can't comment beyond uh, the connectivity beyond um, this this site at this moment. Um, that's not something that I prepared for on, under this particular application, but I'm sure, as you know, Councillor, we can have a discussion about that off-site, just generally um, it, well, we, outside well, of this application. We get that same response from every application on this site, though. Um, can I just go go back to the... Um, um, you say the land trust were going to be taking over the sports facilities. They're, they're, well, that's that's my understanding through the... In terms of the management of it of, yes. afterwards. I don't know about the detail of management, but um, that's that's through the the discussion with the with 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 with, with Sports England. Um, I mean, for example, as part of the communication uh, on on this application, um, I, I can just read this bit for you if, if that's okay. Yeah, yeah. Um, you know, it is understood that the and this is from the the planning manager at Sports England. Um, it is understood that the land trust has been appointed by the applicant to manage the infrastructure on the site including the sports facilities once they have been completed to the agreed specification. Um, sport England and the sports governing bodies that represent the interests of local sports club would welcome early engagement with the land trust in due course to discuss local needs in order to help ensure that an appropriate initial playing pitch layout is provided. Chairman, can I just come back on that? Yeah, Are you saying then that uh, that um a cricket club or a rugby club or a football club needs to get in contact with a land trust to discuss the facilities. I can't, I can't comment on the details of that. Um, this is just a general high level okay. commentary right. in relation to, to the okay. application. The, right. the, the detailed you. matters of those negotiations is not part of this application and probably wouldn't be part of something that we as a planning authority would get involved with. Okay, Councillor, um, Councillor Spency, please. Thank you, Chair. Um, I echo um, Councillor Redwood's concerns, as you know I would, um, Mr Johnson, with regard to the connectivity and looking at where the, um, and I would appreciate a, a, a meeting with you separately with Councillor Edwards to discuss, because we know the problems that we've had with other parts of the suburb and yeah. connectivity into the facilities of the rest of Haybridge, which is affected as the site's developed, it's what's, um, you know, what's connected to what. I have got a couple of questions. Um, as um, as you know, I'm quite keen on the ecological aspects of the application. And looking at page 34 at 567, 5.6.7, landscaping will be introduced to retain existing habitats and to create new habitats. Now, I may have missed it in this report, but I found um, all kinds of things, including song thrush and starling. Um, we've got all the stuff about the amphibians. I'm really curious about the the safe crossing for mammals on the 50 mile an hour relief road but let's not let's not discuss that that now but I, i'm quite i'm quite concerned about the ground nesting birds and i'm sure it'd be no surprise to you mr johnson to hear me mention the word skylarks because as you know no you're not surprised we have a resident who campaigns um on the existing estate there with regard to she's not anti-development at all but she's really worried about the ground nesting birds there now it's unclear to me from looking at this in the buffer zone around the woods which is where the skylarks were last nesting last year when everything was was paired back whether or not any area there is going to be um put aside for them i can't i can't quite see reference in this unless i've missed it um i can't find anything about the ground nesting birds and I know that um, they, they're def they definitely were still there in the last season. So uh, can you give me any more information on that at all, please? Thank you, Chairman. Um, I'm afraid I can't drill down to that level of detail. Um, that level of detail um, would have been within the, the, the documentation submitted with the application. And I would have to say there's a voluminous amount of, of, of detail, you know, the, you know, bumper documents to be colloquial um, in terms of what, what's, what's, what's been submitted. Um, but, you know, as we can see on, under the statutory consultees part of the report, you know, the, the ecology consultant uh, raises no objection um, and supports and pr uh, both proposed mitigation and enhancement measures through the ecological management plan. Um, now, again, you know, again, these are quite bumper documents, but I mean, as you know, Councillor, obviously we've had discussions about this. I'm quite happy that, again, separately, because these are, again, public documents, 
we can go through and discuss so that you're fully aware of the detail and able to obviously execute your local duties accordingly. Yeah, please feel free. Yeah, I, I'm sure the new um, Climate Action Group there will be interested in negotiating with the Land Trust and people mm. here to make sure that there is some protection for the ground nesting birds there. I just quickly wanted to ask one other question, just because, uh, and for members of the public as well reading this, there was, a, a, and you know, just your guidance would help. Mm. So on page 25 at 4.2.1, um, or, or 10 actually, sorry, I should put my glasses back on, shouldn't I? The inspector determining the approved hybrid application considered that the need for the reserve matters to be carried out substantially in accordance with the design and access statement is imprecise and unnecessary. Therefore, the character areas, which is the part where we've got those character areas set out in the report, set out above, are to be considered as guidance only for the assessment of the current reserved matters application. I just wonder if you could give me a little bit of an explanation of exactly what that means. Um, <laughs> well, it's, it's, again, you know, the devil is in the detail in terms of, the, of these applications. Um, the interpretation around um, what the inspector may have said or any particular condition is, is how is that delivered? Is, you know, the applicant makes their submissions through their discharge of conditions or through applications like this. Um, as I mentioned earlier, um, there are there are regular, uh, as in monthly, um, uh, PPA meetings with the developer where we do drill down into in, into the details on this, um, and that's where we try to understand their interpretation of that, and if their interpretation fits with, with what we and and our consultees uh, would expect of that that development. So it's. So to, to get to that stage or the interpretation of that, there is all that work behind it, um, especially on a large scheme like this, which then feeds into this application. It's not just for the applicant to interpret it as they would think and submit it, because they may do that and we, 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 we have that information, we liaise with our consultees, we get their, their responses. If it's unacceptable, then they would be told that the application would, won't be supported. But it's the but, but in a scheme like this, we work with the developers and and with a major scheme and through the PPAs. That's why they're so important as part of the process. We drill down and we go into these detail. We make our comments. They they go away and they work on it and then they come back. So it's an ongoing sort of organic process in the background. Thank you. I just think it's important for members of the public to understand that. So thank you, Mr. Yeah. Johnson. Thanks, Council President. My, Mr. John, I've got one um, request is for PPAs and acronyms. Can we actually, for the benefit of people who don't understand those, actually say what they are, please? Noted, Chair. Thank you. Thanks very much, Chair. Yeah. Because I wouldn't have a clue on half of them. Okay. <laughs> but just to say that, when we talk about PPAs, we're talking about planning performance agreements. Yeah, thank you. Councillor White, please. Um, thank you, Chairman. Um, yeah, mine is reading all through it. Um, we've got lots of lovely big corridors up to 25 metres wide for walkers and cyclists and nature. Um, and I understood after the first phase that we were going to look into bridleways. And surprise, surprise, there aren't any. Um, but And what's interesting is you, you've contacted Sport England um, but Sport England gave £5 million for equestrian this year because they said that um, women are not very good uptakers of sport, but women are big uptakers of horse riding on the whole. Um, and I just wondered why you hadn't, bearing in mind all the questions raised right before, why neither you or the applicants <laughs> hadn't looked into that. Because I think if we're going to be inclusive, and it's all about being inclusive and making sports access for all, um, you know, and, and these were green areas that, that used to be ridden on, and they all keep getting houses all over them. Um, you know, we get faster roads, busier roads, more traffic. Horses are getting squeezed out of everywhere. So why, why, when we've put this in our plan, why, when we've put it in our policies, and why, when we raise it at every single meeting, is it never taken into account? And yet you avoid everything to do with railways. There's every other sort of right of way you can have. And, and, and PROW, why haven't you done um, other PROWs? Why is it only footpath and cycleway? In actual fact, I think you'll find a cycleway should be a restricted byway, which would, by its own definition, be open to horses. So the cycleway, is it a PROW as in a restricted byway, or what is it? Thank you. Mr. Thompson. 
I think. Thank, thank you, Chairman. Um, I, I, I do have to say, um, Councillor White, I, I can't answer um, the, the, the sort of substance of, um, of, of, of your comments in terms of bridleways. Um, th there are no details of bridleways in this application. I, I again, uh, the, 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 yeah, the, the, the broad parameters of application was set when the outline application was approved back in 2019. Um, right. No, I appreciate it may have been mentioned, but if it, if it hadn't fed its way through to the detailed conditions um, within, within, within the outline application, because that would, that would be a, that, 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 that would be part of a broad infrastructure matter and therefore would have been subject to um, conditions in terms of its delivery and that hasn't been the case so so at this particular stage we are or i am in 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 supporting officers with these application um you know we have to follow the conditions as how it is to go outside of that uh, I, I mean officer you know a, a local authority can push the boundaries to how they want but that may not be sustainable in terms of any appeal against that if it doesn't fit in with the with the with the spirit of the condition as it has been formulated so that 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 is a that is a major constraint. Um, that, that's that's about what I can say at this stage. The officer, the might come back. The officers mm. did say they were going to make sure they submitted it back in 2018, 19, whenever it was, and it's really disappointing. And each time we raise it, and it just shows the applicants have got no regard to the members because we've raised it every single time and they've completely ignored it. It's just really disappointing. That's all that we are. We're, we're discriminated against as, as a minority, a minority sport, sportsman. We are discriminated against. Um, and maybe we can look into the form that the PROW is going to take because it's only a footpath, could be a footpath, and a PROW for a cycle should come under a broad umbrella which should include horses. So perhaps that's something we can look into. Mm. Uh, thank you, as public right away, Brown. Johnson. Um, Chairman, this, there's a condition here that, that talks about public right-of-ways, um, which is condition, I think, proposal Roman 5. Um, but according to legislation, a, a bridleway is actually a public right-of-way. Yeah. So I think the committee has, um, you know, I think the committee is right and proper to discuss this at this point, and I, I do recall this. Um, but I, I always get slightly confused. Perhaps, Mr. Johnson, if you can just flick back through the, the slides and is it, and it, because I'm sure. Is there a particular slide? Yeah, I'm not, you know, I'm not quite sure. But there was one which I think clearly showed. Is that the one that shows the, the various developers that are involved in bringing forward this area? That's the I can't remember which one it is. Because <coughs> I, I'm sure and Councillor White will, will be quick to correct me, but I'm sure that one of them actually included a bridleway. On this scheme, I mean, I'm, someone's nodding no. It was supposed to. They said it was. Yes, they said it was. And that got lost. See, this yes, is this is why it, it was, yes. it's very very important after these these meetings to you know to look at the conditions that the officers are set. But you know we are talking about bridleways, and from a legal point of view, that does fit within the definition of a public right of way because you can walk on a, a bridleway. And, um, and and you can also drive your animals along one as yes. well, Chairman. So it's quite an interesting thing, really. Hmm. Thank you, Councillor. Yes, yeah, so, so I, I think to come back, I think what we'll hmm. carry on is what is the public, the PROW, because a footpath can only be a footpath, and anything else I understand has to be a restricted byway or a, a, a byway open to all traffic, which isn't really what you want. But um, but I think we need some clarity there, because I think this has been sort of glossed over. Um, I don't know if any of my peers have any more information, but I didn't understand that um, you could be allowed to have anything else on footpaths other than feet. You can't cycle on a footpath. Mm. So we need to be really clear on what what um, PROW we're having using. Mr. Johnson. Thank you, Chairman. Uh, I can just say I, I, I've noted the point, mm. uh, and, and we'll take that take that away. Mm, appreciate it. Thank you very much indeed. Councillor Hurd, please. 
Um, thank you, Chairman. Just, just an observation, well, a couple of questions and one observation. On page 29, um, at 5235, um, it talks about uh, LEAPs and NEEPs. Uh, it says that the, the NEEP should accord with the standards, that it should be within a walking time of 15 minutes from home. And I think a LEAP should be within five minutes walking distance from a well-used pedestrian route. But I wondered why that wasn't uh, on there on the leap, because they're supposed to be local. But that's that's not a question; it's just an observation. Uh, the other one is uh, on page 32, uh, and this is about uh, the uh, parking standards uh, are not set specific standards for allotments. So. Um, are we talking about a hard standing for these vehicles? And if we if we are, uh, are we still going to see the, the days back when we have these small, thin parking areas that you can't really get a car in and open the doors? So I wondered, my question is, why, why is it that the vehicle parking standards does not set specific minimum parking standards for allotments? That's my first question. Uh, the other one is on uh, just the next page, 33. Uh, and this talks about uh, the infiltration drainage. Uh, and it says that um, on the second paragraph of 553, uh, I think I just. Uh, yeah, how, um, it says that the agreed drainage strategy. Uh, was that due to the relatively shallow groundwater infiltration, drainage techniques will not be utilised on the site. However, other SUDS techniques will be used. And these and they go on to say, a mixture of rainwater butts, permeable paving to private driveways, swales, ponds and attenuation basins. That seems to be an awful lot of um, solutions to a problem that doesn't appear to exist. So I wondered... Uh, wondered if that was right. Thank you, Chairman. Um, well, my understanding that it, it is correct. It's um, the, for example, some of these areas, some of the attenuations, they do double, you know, as, you know, amenity areas um, for general use. So there's, their, their purpose is not just to, you know, collect um, provide the permeability or to direct um, um, rainwater, um, you know, in times of heavy rainfall. It, they, 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 they have a dual purpose. I mean, when it talks about, um, I mean, there's, 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 there's quite a number of things. They will be what's appropriate for a particular uh, uh, environment, uh, say along the roads or uh, adjacent to the um, Plain, the plain areas, the sports pitches, um, they will vary in terms of the particular mechanism that will be used. So I suppose while it sounds like a lot when it's sort of coalesced into a, a sentence in terms of how it's uh, distributed and, and utilised as appropriate around a, quite a large area, um, uh, for me, and also in terms of the, the lead local flood authority, it, it, it's an appropriate approach that the developer's taking. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Sorry, and the about the parking the parking standards on the on the allotments, <coughs> please. Uh, yeah, again. Um, well, we are we are constrained by the the, 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 the parking vehicle standards that Malden has has adopted. Um, if it doesn't have specific standards for allotments, um, then there's there's no standard we can apply in in, in that in that particular sense. An area has been provided. Um, commensurate to the size of the allotments um, but the report does uh, 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 while I can't pick it out right here but my recollection of, of that of that set of that paragraph uh, was that given that allotments aren't used every day by everyone yeah, yeah. Um, the 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 area of car parking um, allocated would be appropriate for you know acceptable parking application or, or standards 
even though there is no specific standards. We're not going to have an area where it's sort of crammed out, people are going to be there all night or people can't find their way to park. It's all part of their leisure activities that people will, you know, as we know, they will use as and when as, as uh, may be appropriate. Well, just a, just a, a yep. supplementary there. So does that also include uh, the car parking for sporting facilities? Are they also non-regulated? Um, I think there is there is there is regulation for the sporting facilities based on the area and how much parking is to be provided. Okay, so they Thank should be Jim. they should be set to the minimum standards. Yeah. 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 Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you, Councillor Hurd. Councillor Hull, please. Oh, thank you. Oh, please, don't, don't, please don't stand. Is that right? Yeah, fine, you. you won't see me then, otherwise. <laughs> no, no, we know you're there, don't worry. You'll be fine. You're okay. Oh, I, um, anyway, I, it's coming back to the horse riding. It's really good. You know, we try to get people fit. And you've got basketball, allotment, cycleways, footpaths, the nature reserves. Um, you know, there's more horses in Essex than any other county. And yet, I've, I've been here four years. We've only managed to get one little bridle way of like a hundred meters and um and that's been stopped because the builders have said oh we'd rather pay the fine than let you ride up there and and we definitely definitely ask for a bridle way here so we why are we sitting here week in week out because i just feel like it's a waste of time because we don't want I think it's um it's more of a statement than a question, but I, I do remember as well that it has been raised on, on many of occasions. Uh, Councillor Stamp, please. Um, yeah, thank you, Chairman. Um, could I actually ask the developer or whoever if they are on their leaps and neeps? It says they're going to have six pieces of equipment on a leap and twelve on a neap. Um, can I ask them ask them if they would be a little bit more adventurous? We have a lot of children with challenges. Um, and instead of just having the normal thing when I say a springy chicken and a swing and a little bit of a slide, well, they always have springy chickens. They're just disguised as not chickens, but they're very springy. So can we actually look at um, providing, because it, it says quite clearly, if you actually look, we do a lot of work nowadays with, with send children. We're trying to get provision mm. into the area, et cetera, et cetera. Mm. And, and I do really feel that we need to actually start looking outside the box. Instead of having what I call cheap standard things we could all have in our garden, can we not just have something which is bigger, more adventurous, adapts and uh, caters for children in wheelchairs, you know, so they sit there and they can play with the things on the sides or whatever they want a trampoline that's in the ground whatever let's use some imagination instead of saying let's have it this is uh, councillor durham was really quite complimentary about this being what it should be which is mm. a beautiful area can't we have some beautiful things in there why does it always in the prom mr chairman where you have a galleon and something big well sorry councillor fluker but um well i'm sorry if i was being a little bit whatever but the point that i'm making is Oh yeah, well, whatever. This is going to be with the um, with the developer. So, can we actually look at it? I mean, if the developer wants to look at my phone afterwards, I'll show him some really good designs of how it can actually fit into. I'm, I'm being serious. I know I'm a little bit flippant, but I do think we really do need to look at the needs of our residents and our young people at different ages. There's two sites on here: a leap and a neap. And I think we need to actually start to do something a little bit better and not just keep putting a springy chicken and a slide and a swing. Thank you, Chairman. Thank you, Councillor. Do you have any comment on that, Mr Johnson? The three valid points. Um, no, thank you, Chairman. Um, I, I don't have any sp specific comments. Um, obviously, um, uh, I'm, I'm sure Councillor Slider is... Uh, Councillor Slider. <laughs> Councillor can, 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 Stamp has seen the slides. <laughs> Uh, I, I can see why I made the mistake now, <laughs> um, and obviously there is, there, is, there is a whole range, and I'm, and I'm sure that your comments are in context of probably what you've seen uh, on the presentation detail, which does seem to set out a, a fair range of equipment. Um, I, I, you know, play boulders. I'm sure you probably would say that doesn't stretch the imagination too far, um, but uh, I, I can't say at this stage. It, it may be I don't know how specific. Um, these play equipments are, they may be indicative, some of them do seem to have um, a, a sort of number, I don't know if it's like a product number or something, um, but I don't know how specific they may be for the, for, for the developer. Um, 
you know the, the, the planning agent is here obviously here in this um, and it, it, it does seem to me that given given the variety that's here um, there could be they could be amenable to, to more variety or, or, an, or an exchange of the type that they've presented here and back chairman that's exactly what I wanted I said it so the developer can hear and mm. anybody else to actually be a little bit more adventurous um, rather than a springy chicken <laughs> Yeah, thank you very much indeed. I'll never look at a springy chicken again. Um, Councillor Swain, please. Yes, thank you, Chairman. Um, first of all, it's very um, pleasing to see that uh, about 50% of the houses are going to have these swift bricks in. That would be very interesting to see how that goes. I've got a number of points. Firstly, on the allotments, 20 plots seems very small, very limited, even for this development. I, um, I don't know whether there are going to be more elsewhere, but um, it seems very limited. As far as the sports area is concerned, is it large enough to um, um, encompass all these different sports? Or are they, is it, are they going to be sort of um, taking turn and turn about and redesigning areas and that sort of thing? It seems um, rather you know, cramped, particularly if you're trying to get a, a, a cricket pitch in and several other sports. Um, on the um, subs, um, it's been pointed out that the, um, high, uh, the water table is very high um, uh, and I don't know that um, water pumps is going to do much. Um, they're, they're very limited, um, uh, uh, what should we say, resource. Um, but if, if the, or since the water table is so high, that must mean that the suds, swales and so on, um, are quite extensive. Um, and maybe deep. So uh, um, I do, uh, what should we say, my concern is that these are really, could be rather sterile areas um, rather than usable. Um, and um, I'm concerned about the gradient of them. If they do have significant amount of water in them, whether they become a, a, a hazard. Um, I mean, I think we're going to get these one in a hundred um, plus 40 percent downpours more frequently than one in a hundred um, and will the sub system actually still be able to keep the flow off the outflow to the greenfield um, standard and on the um, environment side um, I'd be interested to know what is meant by the woodland buffer um, is it just a, a green strip uh, is it intended to be, in some sense, a buffer between the residential development and the woodland? Um, to, in other words, restricting in some way rather than just being an expanse. Thank you, Chairman. Thank you, Councillor Swain. Mr. Johnson. Uh, thank, thank you, Chairman. Um, I, unfortunately, I can't drill down into the level of detail in terms of, for example, the um the, the the woodland buffer is it you know is it a segregated area is it a transitional area um but my understanding is it's not a segregated area um it will be an, an accessible area um but in terms of how it's, it's detailed treatment in terms of that um i i can't comment any further in that detail um, the, 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 the infrastructure, including these green spaces, will be subject to management under the, 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 the you know, sort of land management of the, of the entire estate. Um, so uh, my understanding is that in part when, when these are developed, um, um, it, will be, it will be open to the, 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 the land management acting in, on the interests of, of the residents exactly how those lands will be, will, will be used. Um, but I mean, I, I just understand it as a transitional uh, 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 treatment um, between the residential and the established woodland area. Thank you. You satisfied, Councillor Swain? Um, yes, on the, the extent of the allotments, I don't know if that's, that's probably already in, in set in stone, so to speak. Um, it it is. We, yeah. we, um, somehow waiting for. Sports England to decide how all these sports can be accommodated on the area that's been um, um, set aside for that purpose. Um, 
And well, as a follow-up point, uh, will the, um, the management, the trust management, and the trust um, include or actually be um, controlled by residents? Sorry, I just, Sorry is, your, is your question in relation to the sports facilities or the general infrastructure? Um, because I, I think there's, there's, there's possibly going to be different layers of management. Because if we're talking about the land trust, it's largely the, you know, the more substantial infrastructural type parts of the development. So the, the sort of main areas, rather than maybe more communal and more locally. Um, managed areas which may be a, 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 a local management company i can't speak too much about that, that that's just sort of my peripheral understanding of how these things are taken forward but I, I wouldn't want anyone to think i'm saying anything authoritative in that sense because i you know i, I can't and it's and it's far too early in the scheme um you know for for you know my understanding of how how that would be taken forward um, all we know is that the, 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 the main structures are being set through the section 106. Um, the, the land trust, uh, as per part of the, the overall agreement, um, are taking over the infrastructure areas, which also includes the woodland as well. Um, and it's, it's, it's how that's going to be taken forward. I mean, that, that really sort of is outside of the planning process that we deal with. Just on that just point, point, one is last it, question. Will the whole of the garden suburb be under the sing, one single land trust for management? Uh, my, my understanding that that would be the case. Councillor Spence, do you have a point to? Yeah, if I could just help help on that. <laughs> Uh, the Land Trust is going to manage the entire of Westcombe Park, is my understanding from having spoken to the develop developers at length about that with, with Councillor Edwards. Um, that I don't know about the sports pitches in terms of who will manage those eventually, but the idea is that, that the pitches at the moment will be interchangeable. That's what they're examining. Mm -hmm. um, the other thing is that when you're talking about NHGS, don't forget that the suburb itself, the North Haybridge Garden suburb, isn't just Westcombe Park. There are two other parts and they are managed by separate uh, management companies. So just to give a little bit of clarity. Thank, thank you. Thank you very much indeed, Councillor Spencer. Councillor Morgan, please. Uh, uh, thank you, Mr Chairman. I was just uh, trying to have some, perhaps help out um, Sir Johnson in his question issues. As far as I'm aware, uh, you can cycle down a bridleway, but you can't ride a horse down a cycleway. So it, would it be too simple just to say, right, we'll call them bridleways rather than cycleways? Very sensible suggestion. <laughs> Any comment on that, Mr. Johnson? Or... No? no. Okay. Members, of the... oh, Councillor Bill. Thank you, Chairman. Um, I'm looking at the allotments, and I think I think we was told there was ten. I think it's about ten. So on the assumption <laughs> that we've got about four thousand odd properties going to be in Haybridge, you got a one in four hundred chance of actually getting an allotment because you're not allowed, even though it's called Malden and Haybridge Allotment Society, Malden will not allow Haybridge residents to actually use their allotments. So that those 10 or whatever it is, is amongst about one in 400, the allocation. Also, can um, Mr. Johnson please confirm or deny, have we got um, interconnectivity between all these new houses and Haybridge as such because otherwise you're going to be going up Broad Street Green to, to just get onto this estate or up Langford Road to get onto this estate I just cannot believe that with this amount of houses you've got no connectivity whatsoever and you know with that Sharps Meadow we had the same issue can you show me any of the, the links to, to existing Haybridge Thank you, Councillor okay. Mr. Johnson. Thank, thank you, Chairman. Um, I, I can't specifically um, speak in, in any detailed way about the links to, um, you know, existing areas around around the site. Um, I mean, I mean, when I look at the plan, I, c I can point to, for example, 
um, down in this area, there's there's a two way arrow which seems to suggest some level of interlinking. But I'm not familiar with the areas down here to know what does that mean, how does that translate in on on the ground, and um, that that's something that I would have to take away for me to uh, come back more authoritatively. I can get an answer to that, but I don't have an answer at this point. So you're confirming there are links? No, no, I'm not confirming anything. Why? <laughs> I'm not in a position to at this point in time. But it's something I can are take Are you away. telling me that those arrows are supposed to be the connectivity? They, they, was, they would seem to suggest, but I, I wouldn't, I wouldn't, I'm not saying that with any authoritative voice, apart from the fact that it would seem to suggest some level of two-way. I don't know what that means. It, so, it, it could, so nowhere be, in that planning be, application it for, for, does it mention connectivity? Sorry? In all of this, all of these applications that are coming through, is there any mention whatsoever of interconnectivity? Well, you know, we, we haven't got all of the various parcels of land that's come through showing how the, the, the residential elements um, and their various edges are, are going to be dealt with. Um, so, for example, if we're looking at um, you know the Bellway site here. Um, you know this is at the edge. This is at the corner where they have access to the relief road and access uh, direct to, to Broad Street Green. Um, um, uh, three, six, and seven are areas which is currently under um, uh, discussion at pre-application state uh, at a uh, yeah pre-application stroke uh, planning performance agreement when we sign it stage. Um, where these are matters which can be raised, but again, given where they're they're located, I mean the the edges are bounded by the site itself in terms of how it connects otherwise, and there are there are all there are the various phases. I think that there's the this drawing down here talks about future applications and sort of what what's what's coming forward. Uh, we have identified here. We have identified here. This area here, where we've actually got the two-way thing, these are an application that are coming forward. I, I, I don't clearly don't know the detail of that, but again, in terms of its broader context, I don't know how it's set in terms of how it relates to its edges down here. Um, I mean, these are something that, with these areas, that can be considered um, when these matters are brought before us. And come back. So when is it considered? Because I don't want this to be the same issue as the bridleways. Say, oh, well, you haven't mentioned it, or you should have said it at this point. Okay. I, mean, I, I can't promise anything at this stage because, again, we have the outline application, which has set broad parameters. So not to be confused with parameter plans um, around various constraints of this, 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 this development. Edges are something which, if they haven't, especially if they connect with other areas, and we're talking about change of land ownership, change of detail, change of levels. I mean, for example, some of these matters are what we've come across in terms of where this part, uh, I can't remember where it is. I can't remember exactly where it is. Um, around here somewhere. No, it's down here, isn't it? No? I can't remember exactly where it is. It's a bit too faint for me to, to kind of recognize, but it's... Yeah, it's sort of yeah, it's round here somewhere. Yeah, oh right, exactly. That is round there. I mean, that was not, that was an unresolved area. Uh, uh, well, it wasn't even considered in any great detail, apart from a, a vague and indicative line on the on the applicant's drawing, which terminated at its boundary, um, which has given rise to the issues there. And I can recognise that, but I don't know what it means in terms of, in term in terms of the other edges. Um, is this something that can be considered at this particular time in terms of what the developer can be requested to do under the application? These are things I don't know. I can only take these back as consideration. So for me, it's useful to hear these points raised to be then taken back and then to sort of put in a mix when we're considering it. But that can be no promise that it can be delivered until I know the detail. Thank you, Councillor. Yeah, well, Thank I really you. need them to take that on board yeah. because as we've said, there's going to be a school there and it's not just going to be the people living on that estate that are going to be going to that school. There's going to be children from the existing Haybridge at the minute. How would they get there? Do they have to go all the way up Broad Street Green or up Langford Road just to get onto that development? It's a bit of a nonsense. 
Thank you very much indeed. Uh, 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 Councillor Fleming, I think you've got uh, something to ask. Thank you, Chair. Just following on from this, for the benefit of members, there is, well, I think it's a footpath because I walk on it. Maybe it's not. <laughs> um, it's, I think it's called Grapnell's Farm Chase or Wood Lane, maybe. Yeah, so that goes from Holloway Road. So that would go all the way up. The, the sort of bit of land to the left of the sports pitches, that's not included in this development, but it's, it's a farm or small holding. Yeah, so the, the, there's a footpath. Or the, the chase runs all the way up there, all the way up to the wood. So that will provide connectivity from Holloway Road up there. I mean, it's a quite bumpy. It's not terribly well made up. So and I think it's just a footpath. It's not a bridleway. It's not a byway. It's just a footpath. But pedestrians can get from Haybridge, from Holloway Road, up that footpath. Well, I'm hoping it's footpath. I it is. Yeah. OK, uh, Councillor Darren, please. Yeah, thank you. Just going back on this, uh, I, I mean, we, we are, we're labouring it a lot, but it is important. You know, public right of way is exactly that, but it has to go somewhere. It's absolutely pointless to have footpaths and public rights of way crisscrossing this development if it doesn't link up with the wider network. That's, mm. that's the whole point. And I'm hoping that those little arrows are where the internal foot, footpaths <laughs> or whatever they are link up with, with the outside. I suspect they do, but we can't take it for granted because Sharps Meadow has been mentioned, which provided internal footways on that development that were meant to line up. Mr Johnson knows this very well because we met down there. Mm. were meant to join up with uh, a, an existing road, but the residents put a fence up because they didn't want people using it. So we need to be on the ball and we need to make sure that where these um, footpath links are shown, that they are actually delivered. Even more so, look, it's pointless having a bridleway on the site unless it links to a bridleway from on the outside. Unless you're going to ride your horse along a road onto the site and just ride it around a housing estate, that doesn't make yeah, doesn't make sense at all. So it needs to be linking an, an existing bridleway rather than just being isolated. And then, and, and for Councillor Spenceley's. Um, comfort for the, the mammal crossing i'm assuming it's like the ones on the a130 which is a badger tunnel and underneath the road rather than across it it's cheaper than a footway for them thank you certainly cheaper than the horse footway over the railway in whitton but um I'm, there there's about a dozen badger tunnels under the a130 which i'm sure it's a yes there they are that's exactly that's exactly the same as on the 130 yeah yeah Small okay. children can get through it as well. <laughs> let's, let's hope that that doesn't happen. Uh, Councillor Shaughnessy, please. Hello. Thank you. Thank you, Chairman. Um, I'd just like to sort of reinforce a couple of things that have already been said this evening, so I will be brief. Um, but while the agent is here, as, as has been mentioned before, um, I'm really pleased about the um, swift bricks um, you know, these swift brick houses. I've been talking to developers for years about this. Developers and planners, I've been talking about for years. I'm really pleased to see that they are coming in on this development and in such numbers as well. Um, and I hope that they, um, you know, stay on this, uh, uh, you know, within this text. Uh, I wouldn't you know, want them to be um, sort of thrown out at a later date. We really need to keep those in. Thank you, Chairman. Yep. And also, I would like to um, reinforce what Councillor Stamp has said about the uh, placings um, in these leaps and leaps or, what, or whatever they are. Mm. Um, there are some really good um, play up apparatus around made of really strong metal that will last for years and years and years. Um, and and. As Councillor Stamp said, um, the stuff that's on the list and that's usually put in these developments it is really old hat, um, and and the and the springy things just drive me nuts. I think they are stupid. I really think they are stupid. Have no place in a modern play area. Thank you, Chair. Very much uh, Councillor Spencely, please, last time. Yeah, just, just one last thing, and, and backing up what uh, Councillor Ritter said, um, what Councillor Beale said and Councillor Dunn, we do need to, 
to have meetings on the ground and you know this Mr Johnson already because the situation members is for the 10 11 and 12 which we recently approved is that in truth most of the people on those parcels the 262 homes at the moment because the rest of the suburb isn't built will be um, traversing um, Broad Street Green on foot because the other the other um, entrance didn't work and still isn't um, and, and probably won't be because it's part of a legal dispute mm. so um, you know th th there is a problem with the way this was was phased and the connectivity works so we do really need to make sure that going forwards we have the right connections in place and and not the meeting to mention it but here i go i'm going to mention it anyway is that i do hope that we will get improvements to broad street green road to make it more pedestrian friendly and i've been thinking about that and working behind the scenes on that a lot and i hope it not from this development but eventually we do because this you know this this suburb was planned long before i came along and it is surrounded by country lanes with very little pedestrian access and we should be moving away from that and i hope that things can be rectified so that it will be better for residents in the fullness of time thank you mm. thank you very much Catherine. castle fluka please yeah thank you chairman i mean i chairman I'd, i don't think we should lose sight of the fact that we're dealing with a reserve matters application here and, mm. and, and whilst i take a certain degree of comfort in what um, mr johnson said um yeah we have had problems in the past we've agreed to things like prior to ways ask it to be conditioned and then it hasn't been conditioned but that's as much as the fault of the members or anybody else for not reading the reports after the meetings but chairman you know i hear the discussions about connectivity 5.2.26 i think it is deals with connectivity through the the site i think they refer to it as a green space code so that shows you if you read that narrative it shows it tells you how it connects to other things um highways don't have any objections to this um you know i as far as bridleways are concerned i mean come to southminster you know woodside 106 agreement we had a bridleway through there and i'm sorry that it's not used but you're most welcome to come to the parish and use it um and then chairman the, you know as far as I'm concerned with this, you know, we've, we've discussed it long and hard. Um, and I can't really see all the statutory consultees support it. There's no objections from the parish council. And, and I think that from what the members have said, I haven't heard them say anything really that speaks to refusing this application. So Chairman, I would propose, I would propose Chairman that we agree the recommendation. Thank you. Seconded. So before we actually move to that, um, Councillor Hurd is the last speaker on my list, so I would like to go to Councillor Hurd first and then move your recommendation, Councillor Fluka. You need to turn your microphone Oops, on, Mr. Fluka, Thank you. It was really just uh, just to uh, help Mr. Johnson perhaps. On 5232, it talks about uh, a green corridor and uh, goes on talking about footpaths connecting the largest site of the North Haybridge Garden suburb with the S2E. I don't know what S2E is, though. Yeah, please feel free. Councillor Durham, your microphone's on. Right. Sorry, Chair. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Councillor Hurd. So we have um, uh, Councillor Fluker um, making a recommendation which was seconded. Um, sorry, my screen's gone there by Councillor Durham. Um, so, members, do you want to agree this by assent or would you like a recorded vote or? Agreed, agreed by assent. Thank you, members. That's carried. Thank you very much. We move on to item number six, which is application 22 slash 01024 slash OUT outlying, land north of Mangaps Rail Museum, Southminster Road, Burnham on Crouch, Essex. We had a, a members update issue to us. Um, and the, the members' update says it's been redrawn for committee uh, for for reasons. Uh, Chairman, can Stan I interrupt you and say point of order? Thank of you. Of course, you can. Chairman, I'm I'm fearful of where this where this debate may go, um, and I would propose, Chairman, that we either do it, we either discuss what you've just proposed as an emergency item rather than open up the planning application, which is what you you're planning to do, uh, or better still, Chairman. Um, um, take the, the committee into private and confidential under section 100A of the Act. Thank you. Um, let me just see, hang on a second. 
Miss Johnson, what's your, what do you feel? What do you feel about it? Confidential. Yeah, we're not going to do that. I mean, there's very little I can say. Yeah, yeah, you know, it's not regulatory, is it? Yeah. Well, I think, uh, Councillor Fluke, as Councillor Stamp has made a, a, a question earlier on uh, in open session, I'll allow Councillor Stamp to ask a question. Um, and then if, if the debate comes on, we may move that into private and confidential session. Chairman, I don't want to debate it. Mm. I don't think it's appropriate to debate it. I just actually want an explanation of what it actually means. Yeah, thank you, Councillor Stamp. That's fine, thank you. I, I also, uh, I'd, I'd like to second Councillor Stamp because um, if we can just be um, a little bit more detailed uh, in the explanation of why it was withdrawn, that would, that would help members. Thank, thank you, Chairman. Uh, as I said, there's, there's very little I can say. Uh, but probably just to put a, a few more words around um, what's in the member's update. Um, this um, matters had come to my attention um, quite re well, quite recently um, within this week in terms of um, consultee responses um, and um, that the consultee responses were inconsistent with the status of the application. But what had happened during the application, uh, it was initially submitted as a, well, an outline for access and layout um, for future considerations as is standard. But during that process, um, it was amended to remove layout uh, from the consideration. So therefore it was only access. However, a number of the consultee responses didn't have regard to the fact that layout had been removed. So that's so that significantly impacted on how the assessment was taken forward. So that's that's the sub, that's the substance of so it would, members would have had in front of them information which actually wasn't accurate in terms of the nature of the application in front of them. Thank you, Mr. Johnson. Um, I'd like to thank Mr. Johnson because yep. I actually did a lot of research on outline and what should be included, and I'd gotten three three paragraphs ready to read out at anything that was going to be said at this meeting tonight, because it's really important that the information that is provided is actually dealt with on the application. So th thank you very much for the clarity. Yeah, thank you, Councillor. Thank you, Mr. Johnson. I'd echo that from the Chair, but I'd also be making a recommendation to overview scrutiny about this issue. Uh, members, uh, any other urgent members of business that the Chairman decides are urgent? I have none. So therefore, members, I'd like to close this meeting at uh, 20.47 and thank you for your contributions. Please travel home safely and enjoy your evening. Thank you. Meeting closed.